in my travels through the digital frugal world I've come across all sorts of interesting phrases and sayings that resonate with me. So some of them will be things I already do. Some of them just say things in a better way than I would. And I thought that I would share a few of them with you because they make for some interesting talking points. And when I read some of the comments that I get, I can see how people have kind of gone wrong or don't really understand how to really manage their money well um, or how to push back against the system. But it's really interesting looking at these particular sayings. So I'm going to show you a few of these and then say a few words about them. And if you have any, do add them because uh, I'm always looking for new and interesting things. So this is a really interesting one and certainly I come from a background of where if you wanted stuff then the best way to get it was to try and earn more money. And we definitely live in an age where we are expected to want everything, to have everything, to not rein our spending in. We're taught that what you have isn't good enough um, and that you always need to expand on that and we aren't really taught a savings ethic that not spending money and putting it aside is a good idea and that you don't always have to try and outpace your spending by earning more money it's not always the way you don't have to, you know, let's say you get a pay rise. You don't have to go out and get a new car or buy a new sofa or book an expensive holiday. You could just carry on living the same way and put that money aside. So you have rainy day funds, emergency funds, save up for that holiday rather than buying it on credit. But it's not something we're really taught that... You don't have to earn more to outpace your spending. You could just cut back on your spending and keep the same income. And I think if we understood that better, it would be far easier for people to save. And one of the problems I see is that, particularly with advertising, with retailers who are desperate for your money, they're always telling you that you have to upgrade, buy new, by better, by different, by more of, and you don't. If you can ignore all that, and if you can understand that the retailer advertising is just a con because all that matters to them is CEO paychecks and profit margins at the end of the tax year, then maybe you would stop giving them all your money. For what? For your own debt, for your own lack of peace of mind, and you don't need a new sofa every couple of years. You don't need to replace your car every three years. You don't need the latest mobile phone on a contract. There are so many things that you, you just don't need. So instead of trying to outpace your spending by finding more ways to make more money, by upgrading your job, by asking for pay rises, if you dropped your spending to the stuff that you needed rather than just the stuff that you instinctively wanted you would probably find that you actually did have more money don't give retailers your money wealth is not about the clothes that you're wearing it's not about how new and how big your latest car is wealth is about the money that's actually in the bank um, the money that will provide you a comfortable or very comfortable retirement and will allow you to do things like go on month-long cruises in your 80s and 
go for nice restaurant meals in your 70s rather than just having the basics. Wealth is not about how you look or how you behave outwardly. It's about the money that's quietly sitting in your bank account, earning you interest, earning you peace of mind, earning you comfortable life in your later years when you aren't able to have an income, uh, or you don't have a job, or maybe if your health isn't as good that you can afford private health care to keep you as comfortably as you want to be kept. And that brings me on to the next point. I love this phrase. It's much in the same vein as the previous one. You know, you can flash around your money in the pub or the restaurant or in your new car, but wealth is the thing that kind of lurks in the background doing its own thing and you don't have to do anything for it. Um, I've also heard the phrase stealth wealth, which is people who are very comfortably off, who may be absolutely wealthy, but don't go splashing it around and telling everybody about it. I found find the whole flashing cash around thing quite unpalatable, actually. Um, it's the kind of showing off that really doesn't impress me. I just don't like it. Um, it's particularly in... Our modern age, it's a bit grotesque, you know. You see these TikTokers and Instagrammers and YouTubers apparently living very rich, expensive lives and, you know, flashing their cash around and talking about the £3,000 they spent on a pair of glasses uh, when, you know, there are people who literally have nothing. Um, you could do so much more with money like that. I mean, how much money do you need? You don't need millions of pounds to live a comfortable life. You could do better with that money. If I won a million, I know what I would do with it and very little of it would probably go to me. There are other people that I have a hit list of people that I would help, actually help. And it would be make meaningful changes in their life, like making them worry less about money. Uh, things like that. Um, So you don't really need to shout about the money that you do have. And I think that being quiet about it and being safe in the knowledge that you are relatively financially secure is a, is a good way to live your life. We seem to have a very strange attitude towards saving. And I know that this isn't everybody. It is something I've seen in the comments on my channel and I've seen other people talk about how, you know, if you're saving money, if you're not spending money, that there's something wrong with you, that you're a Scrooge or a miser or you're tight or financially you must be in deep trouble. As if saving money and looking after your financial future is offensive to people and I find that really strange because you can save money and still enjoy life you it's not like you're you know I mean over the last few years I have had a lot less income and I've had to get used to having less of things that most people don't think about having like having the central heating on all the time during the winter like having takeaways on a Friday night or going to the pub or going on two holidays a year. Not having those things I don't see as deprivation. There are limits, of course, you know, if it's really, really cold, I will put the heating on. But over the time that I've been here and I've had to curb my spending, I've toughened up. That's one thing that's happened. And my lifestyle has changed. I've got used to eating cheaper but actually eating healthier because most of the yellow stickers I buy in the supermarket are fresh vegetables. I learnt to cook from scratch because that was how I could use those cheap things that I bought in the supermarket and turn them into really good meals which m made me feel like I wasn't depriving myself in the kitchen at least. Um, 
Yes, I don't put the heating on as much, but I have discovered that I, if I put an extra jumper on, uh, get a hot water bottle, I'm just as warm. And in fact, too much central heating can be quite bad for your um, your respiration, that sort of thing. You can dry out your system. So I tend to go with, uh, I use the, the, the Martin Lewis mantra, which is um, heat the body, not the room. That's basically what he's saying. If you warm yourself up, if you are warm in yourself, um, and you don't feel cold, then what's going on in the atmosphere around you isn't the thing that's going to kill you. Of course, if you're frail, elderly, have um, existing health conditions, that this, that's a whole different thing, but I'm talking about for people who are fit, healthy and able to endure a little bit of cold. And each year that I do this, I get a little bit tougher. So now I find that the temperature needs to be a degree lower for me to need to put the heating on because I'm not feeling the cold as much. And people might think that's weird, but I see people walking around my town in the middle of winter and they've got shorts on or they're out in a t-shirt. I was out this morning and we've had a very cold night overnight. It was only four degrees when I was out at about half past eight. And there was a woman walking down the road taking her child to school and she had a pair of leggings and a t-shirt on. And I was there in my two jumpers and my coat because I like to be warm. It doesn't matter what the atmosphere is doing. Um, but people up here who have been brought up in colder environments anyway are tougher. They are just tougher. And maybe she was like an exercise freak and her body was used to working harder and it just kept her warmer. Because when you are fitter, you also don't feel the temperatures as bad because your metabolism rate is always working at a higher speed so you're generally keeping yourself warmer anyway at least that's how i understand it um i've always been a bit of a cold person but i'm not a terribly active person i'm not going to lie but saving money isn't about depriving yourself of anything it's about not depriving yourself in the future if you've got that emergency fund in case you lose your job and you have um, savings in the bank for you know other plans maybe you know that in five years you're going to have to replace your car maybe you really want to do that special two-week holiday but you don't want to get in debt for it maybe you know that Christmas is an expensive time for you saving and cutting back it's not deprivation if you're just counting back on a few takeaways a month or a few pub crawls. That's not deprivation. We have this weird idea of what basic modern life should be, that it should be about eating as much of and as often as and going to the pub all the time and buying lots of new clothes and replacing your furniture and buying a new car and it really isn't not having those things is not deprivation that's just sensible so that's a few thoughts on some phrases that I really like and it worries me how few people have any grasp on their finances. I watch, um, there's a YouTube channel called Financial Audit that I watch. It is an American channel, but it really does bother me. It worries me how completely ignorant people are of their finances how they don't consider enormous debt to be a problem if they just want something. Not needing something, but just wanting something. That they'd quite happily get into debt for Starbucks and McDonald's and car loans. Why would you give these big companies your money to put you into financial hardship? They don't care. They just want to make money. And if you think more carefully about how companies are taking the mickey out of you, they're screwing you over for things that you don't need. 
and I think we have got modern life all wrong at the moment. I think our attitude to money has just completely lost its way. And if you are kind of in the midst of trying to improve your finances, looking for more ethical ways to live your life, um, looking for ways to downsize your spending, then maybe some of these phrases will resonate with you. They resonate with me because I'm already doing them, but I'm always looking for new inspiration. New ways to describe what I already do, but also new things that I can add. So I hope that that's been interesting, that you found it useful, that it's helped you maybe clarify something in your mind if you are on a, a struggle to maybe downsize your life a little bit because your income doesn't meet your outgoings and that we've been taught to become addicted to spending and that that's the only way to entertain yourself is to spend money on stuff and it isn't and you just have to change your mindset and I know it's difficult and you know I used to do it I used to go on Saturday morning clothing shopping hauls to Primark and New Look and I had credit card debt I've done it I'm not like goody two-shoes not like oh I've lived my entire life frugally that's not true my parents are comfortably off my parents don't worry about being able to pay the bills um but we lead, we lead quite different lifestyles and that's primarily because my parents worked hard to look after their money and look after themselves and look after us as kids and had a sensible mindset. Both my parents come from working class stock so their parents worked hard and worked their way up to be secure they weren't rich by any stretch of the imagination but they were secure enough to not have to worry and then their children built on that and rose in the ranks a little bit to be comfortable and secure and in turn that means that if me or my brother had a major financial crisis we would be secure and people will go oh well you, you've got rich parents it's all right for you well all parents should strive to be comfortable enough off, maybe not even to help their children, but just to have to not expect their children to help them. There should be an, a, a gradual climbing of the ladder in successive generations. So maybe your parents are working class, but they worked hard to be secure enough to enjoy their retirement and not have to ask you for help. And so you didn't have to worry about them. And in turn, that meant that you were able to increase your own uh, expenses in terms of maybe you bought your house and they hadn't. Maybe you were able to give your kids uh, a better education because maybe you could afford a private school or your kids were able to go to grammar school or whatever. And then at least you weren't asking your parents for help because they made bad choices parents forget that they have a responsibility towards their children to not expect their kids to help them when they're older. And equally, children should not expect their parents to bail them out, but it's nice to know that if a catastrophe happened, that there would be some support there in an emergency. Not an expectation, but if something happened, then you could be helped out even in the short term. But that it wouldn't then leave your parents in deprivation. There's a lot of expectation now from kids that their parents are going to give them the money to buy a house. As if owning a house is the be all and end all of the world. Because it isn't. It really isn't. And you don't own that house until you've paid off the mortgage. So effectively, until you've paid it off, you're still a renter. Because if something happens to your income, you know, three months of no mortgage payments and they will turn you out of that house and take it back. And then all the work and all the effort and all the money you've put into it has gone. So I do think that mortgages are a little bit of a fallacy. Home ownership is only ownership when they can't come and take away your house because you've paid it off. Those are my thoughts for the day. I hope you've enjoyed it. Do comment below. 
and uh, I'll speak to you soon. See you soon. Bye.